Okay, I'm going to walk through um, uh, exercise one from chapter two of Beam, Lincoln, and Barnett. Um, you do have a solution to this in the study guide that came with your textbook. Uh, so what I'm providing here, I hope, in value is some annotation and some basically walking you through the solution. Okay, so let's just go one by one. Uh, alpha, first one, Alpha had lived in uh, all of his life in Vancouver, so in Canada, until this year when he left with his family on August 27th to live in Los Angeles. So again, let's just look at our options here. He's either a full-time resident, a non-resident, or a part-year resident. Okay, and in making this determination, remember what we're looking for here is this continuing state of relationship. So does he have a continuing state of relationship with Canada? That would make him a resident if he did. Well, clearly, if he's lived all his life in Vancouver, he's physically been here, he's a resident, but he left. And so the answer here is he's part year. It, because I mean, we have no facts here, but it certainly looks like he has made what we call a clean break, and that he is gone and does not intend to come back. And so he would file for whatever year this is. It's called this 2011. He would file for his in, uh, a Canadian tax return for 2011, and would only include income and expenses and deductions um, uh, up up until this point. Oh, that's not how you spell until. Okay, so um, that's it. That's all she wrote for him. Beta is a Canadian citizen who has lived in the United States with his family for the past nine years. So this is, again, we got choices. He didn't come or go in the year, so he's not part year. So it's either full-time resident or non-resident. Well, he's a Canadian citizen. Does that give him a continuing state of relationship with Canada? What well, does, it'll entitle him to carry a passport, it'll entitle him to voting in Canadian elections, um, but it does not entitle him, or does not, sorry, require him to pay taxes in Canada. So this answer is he's a non-resident. Because for our purposes, in Canada, where you are determines whether you're a taxpayer, not your citizenship. Incidentally, as I think I mentioned before, in the United States, it's the opposite. If he were a, if he's a U.S. citizen, he pays tax or files a U.S. tax return every year, regardless. Okay, now here we've got an issue uh, for Gamma of he's on the border. He or she is on the border of the U.S. and Canada. So they live. She lives. Let's call her she lives in Ni in the U.S. but works in Canada. So who does she have the continuing state of relationship with? Well, clearly she has a continuing state of relationship with both, but she lives in the U.S., so she's a non-resident. However, does this mean she doesn't pay tax on the on the her employment income that she's earning in Canada? And the answer is absolutely not. She does pay. So sorry, a bunch of negatives floating around there. Um, she does pay tax. She pays Canadian tax on Canadian source income, which for her, from everything we know about her, is all of her income. All of her employment income is in, is in Canada. So her, her tax situation is going to look a lot like the people she works with who live in Canada and work in Canada. But she's taxable under a different part of the act. She's non-resident um, and, and so therefore doesn't pay, isn't considered a Canadian resident but still will pay lots of Canadian tax. Okay, now Delta. He lived all his life in Dallas, Texas, so presumably a U.S. citizen, not a resident. He moved with his family to Calgary this year, early this year, to take a job. So that sure looks like what we call a fresh start. But wait, he moved back to Dallas. What? So he brought his whole family up here, and then in, you know, looks like three or four months later, moved back. So what was going on? Well, we don't know because we don't have the facts, but intention is what matters. So obviously his options here are one, he's a part year resident, or two, he's a non-resident. He's clearly not a full time resident. But 
in the end of the day, it's probably not going to matter a whole lot because under either of these options, he's going to pay tax on the income that he earned while he was working for this company in Calgary, um, Canadian um, tax. He's going to pay t Canadian tax on that income regardless of these options. So, but it will matter. And then these these shares that they they tack onto the question are just a, a separate little issue that um, if he owns um, these shares and then moves to the states, how does that all get tax taxed? Well, I mean, you can see in the solution there. There's there's this uh, um, how we tax the foreign shareholders of companies, um, but we'll, we won't get bogged down in that right now. We'll just talk about the residency. Okay, so Epsilon was born in the USA, as the Springsteen song goes. He was born in the USA. Oh, and he's just 10 years old, so he's a minor. So this is just we're obviously looking at a, a and uh, one of these special cases. What do you do for a minor? Well, his mother works at a Canadian consulate which is in the USA so they they live in the US he's never been here so could he possibly be a full-time resident if he's never been here and the answer is yes he could he's deemed by relationship to his mother to be a resident so minors take on the uh, tax identity of their parents deemed by relationship with mom now, is this a big deal? Unless he's you know, some whiz kid who's making income, it's, it really doesn't matter. He doesn't have any income, so he's not going to pay any tax anyway. But if he is that rare kid who had earned some money, then the Canadian government is entitled to tax him on it. So Mu, German citizen who is married to a member of the Canadian Forces. So a member of the Canadian Forces is a resident. That's a little twist. No matter where they are in the world, they are resident of Canada. But she's only been to Canada for a brief visit, so basically she on her own is a non-resident. So the question here is, is she deemed by relationship to her husband? So we're ba they're basically looking you know, across these two fact situations. We're going to deem the minor. Are we going to deem the spouse as well? And so we think about it and we think and we think and we say, no, not deemed. So she is in fact a non-resident of Canada and not subject to or subject only to um, Canadian tax on income she earns in Canada which appears to be none because she only comes when they're on vacation okay we'll leave it at that